Welcome to December. What do you think? It looks great, doesn't it? We have a fabulous decorating team here at Vision. So here we are in December. We're in a new month. We're in a new theme. Journey to oneness. Yeah, okay. Today's title, All There Is. <laughs> well, it's a weird theme, Journey to Oneness. I don't know. It's just because there really isn't any place to go, is there? I mean, there's no place to get to. This is oneness, One, you know. Hmm. There's no place to go or no distance we have to travel to get to oneness to begin with. There's no journey. Oneness is who and what we are. We're already there. The journey, if there is a journey at all, it's a journey within. It is our journey within us. It is awakening more than a journey. It's an awakening to the truth of who we are all along. Because we are living the one life of spirit. And it was, it was spoken so beautifully in Alan's prayer, and it was sung so beautifully in Terry's song, that there is only one of us. There is only one energy. And we are all individualized expressions of that one life. But there is only one. So we are living that one life already, like a, like a wave in the ocean. You know, that wave contains all of the elements of the whole ocean, but it's not the whole ocean. And that's kind of what we are. We're individualized expressions with all of the qualities of spirit within us, but we're not the whole thing. We are individualized. We take on form and emotion and intellect for a certain amount of time. We individualize this universal intelligence that we call spirit or God or whatever. Core concept one. This is core concept one. God is all there is, and, that is, and that's uh, the core concepts that we teach here in the science of mind and spirit. And Ernest Holmes said this in the science. He, he wrote a commentary, which was a beautiful document, um, when he wrote the 1926 uh, Science of Mind textbook, the original textbook, the one we, we don't use. We use a, a, the 38 edition, the one that he edited um, several years later. But in the original 1926 edition of the Science of Mind textbook, you can get it in the Resource Center. Um, it's a little different than the one we use, but he wrote this beautiful 210-page commentary on the Science of Mind textbook that he had written in 1926. And it's, a, it's, a, it's really a wonderful thing to be able to read the 26 uh, Science of Mind text and then read the commentary so you can actually read Ernest Holmes' words saying, this is what I meant when I said this. I mean, it's fascinating. Anyway, I think we have it. Don't we have the commentary? In this resource center? I don't know. Well, we'll look it up for you. Anyway, in the commentary, he says this. When we say God is all there is, we are not just mumbling words. To the mind of the one saying it, what does it mean? He must understand that in his own mind, what the statement means. God is all there is, and there isn't anything else. This is denied in philosophy and in science and in religion. It will still be proven to be true. It isn't up to us to prove it to anyone but ourselves. God is all there is. There is only one life. It is the soundest philosophy that has ever been given to the world. And the nearer that people approach it, the nearer they have approached a state of certainty and the more effective the results they will obtain. Good is power, and evil is not. As someone pointed out to me the other day, you can send a shaft of light through the darkness, but you cannot send a shaft of darkness through the light. There is one energy. There is one. There is no dualism. There is only the apparent dualism in our mind. And this one energy, this one source, this one thing, we call the divine. We call it God. We call it Allah. We call it Buddha mind, Christ consciousness. Call it whatever you want. It is one and never, ever two. And this one self-evident, self-loving, self-giving, creative energy incarnates itself as everything as everything, without being absorbed by its creation. So we understand that, right? It creates everything, but it is not used up when it creates because it is eternal and it is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent and infinite in its scope and nature. It is infinite. So everything that there is, everything that there is is made of this one. 
So let's talk about this theme then, journey to oneness. We're stuck with it for the month, so let's talk about it. <laughs> like I said, if I ran the world, it wouldn't be... <laughs> Sorry. It wouldn't be journey to oneness. The theme would be awakening, awakening to our oneness. Does that make more sense? It already is. There's no place we have to get to. It already is. There's no journey. Hmm. Anyway, if we call it a journey, it is a journey within. It is self-discovery. It is finding out that the thing that we are seeking is hidden inside of us all along. We're thinking, we're seeking communion with the divine. It is within us all along hidden in our own true nature. In the very place, of course, we wouldn't look, right? <laughs> God's having way too much fun at our expense. <laughs> we go to self-help books, and we go to seminars, and we go to webinars, and we go to confessionals, and we go all over the place out there seeking the thing that is found within us, seeking the one that is within us, seeking the answer out there to everything is found within us. And the ancients and the mystics and the saints and the sages of every, every era and every millennium told us this. And we keep forgetting, right? How long do we know the term know thyself? That's an ancient, ancient term. And yet every single millennium, every generation, every new religion, every new philosophy, everything that comes along says the same thing. Know thyself. Know thyself. The divine that we are seeking is found within. Meister Eckhart said this. He said, spirituality is not to be learned by flight from the world or by running away from things or by turning solitary and going apart from the world. Rather, we must learn an inner solitude whenever or with whomever we may be. We must learn to penetrate things and find God there. And that is the truth of our nature. We must go within and find God there. God, spirit, first cause, universal intelligence, whatever, whatever name you feel comfortable calling it, it is the name and the nature of the physical world. It is the name and the nature of the spiritual world because they are one, because there is only one. The grass under our feet is divine. It is made of the same substance, right? It's energy. All it is is energy. The fish that swim in the ocean, the birds that take flight, the creepy, crawly bugs <laughs> that are found, you know, in the earth. It's all the body of the divine. The very earth that we walk on is holy ground. It is the body of God because everything is made out of the same stuff. Everything is made out of energy. This universal intelligence is everything in the world, manifest or unmanifest. And when we look at life like this, everything around us is holy. Everything around us and everything that happens to us, it's all the divine speaking through. Everything is an opportunity to awaken to our divine nature. Everything that happens in our life and around our life Everything that we observe and everything that we experience is an, is an opportunity to awaken to the divinity within us. Everything is telling us the story of us. Don't you love that? Isn't that cool? I love it. Anyway, we're learning to, uh, no, we are learning about ourselves through everything that we take in, through every experience we have. Again, going back to Meister Eckhart, he said this, when the soul wants to experience something, she throws out an image in front of her and then steps into it. Isn't that lovely? She throws out an image in front of her and then steps into it. And isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do when we want to experience something? Things happen all around us, and we want to understand ourselves. We step into that experience. It's our own soul calling us to evolve. More than running around trying to fix things, because we're really good at doing that, i got to tell you, we must understand what the outer is trying to tell us about us. You know, when something happens in the world around us, it's telling us something about us. You know, we just went through this contentious election, right? 
And it's, yeah, see, I know here you can hear the groans. So there are, it's still reverberating, right? It's still reverberating. Okay, my candidate is better than your candidate. No, my candidate is better than your, no, mine, no, yours, no, mine, now yada, 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 yada. What we did was we placed our energy and attention on the people, places, and things around us because they were going to save us, right? We placed our faith in those things around us. Mine's better. No, mine's better. No, mine's better. Because why? Because, oh, with this person, I'll be safe. Oh, no, with that person, I'll be safe. When God is our refuge and our sanctuary all along, and it has nothing to do with that, we're looking outside of ourselves for our answers, and our answers are found within. We mustn't place our faith in people, places, and events around us, outside of us. But what we can do is we can allow that stuff out there to explain something to us about us, something we need to know to grow. When we are identifying with things out there, we've put our identity in the wrong place. Out there should inform us about who we are? No, no. Our inner divinity should be looking out at the world with safety and with power and with composure, right? Our inner divinity looks out upon the world because we're coming from that place of wholeness. When we identify with the conditions, we can be certain that we're in the effect and we're not in our truth. When we're looking out there for all these things out there to solve our quote-unquote problems or to fix things for us, we can be certain we're in the condition and we're not in the truth. And we're probably in our ego, too. I know better. <laughs> you know, I know better than God. I know how to fix this thing. <laughs> you know, it's moving in this direction, but no, no, no. I want it to go over here because I know better. How's that working out for us? <laughs> Not too well, you know. When we start thinking our way is the right way, you can bet you're an ego. You're absolutely an ego. And so that's the time to take the step back and say, what is this stuff out here telling me about me? What is this stuff out here that I'm all upset by, that I'm trying to fix? What is it telling me about me? Because if we're running around trying to fix it, you know we're an ego. There's a great story. I remember Megan Don. Does anybody remember Megan Don? She's an author. She's wonderful. She um, does seminars and things about um, Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of Avila. And she said that she told a story once where uh, St. Teresa was leading a group of nuns from one town to another uh, to, to a new convent. And they had like two days journey. They had food and, and supplies for the two days. They get to the place, they get to the house where the new convent is supposed to be. It's burnt to the ground. <laughs> and, and the nuns freaked out. You know, of course they would. I would, you know. <laughs> it's like, wait, we walked two days. And now there's nothing. What are we going to do? 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 And, and St. Teresa sat on a rock by the side of the road and started to pray. And they were just, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? What are we going to, you know, the human mind right away. It goes into problem solving. And how are we going to work this? And what are we going to do? And Teresa just sat on the side of the road and prayed. And she just sat on the rock. I think they said that she sat there for a day or so. I don't even remember what the story was. But what happened was a gentleman was walking along the road. And he said, what's all the nuns doing on the side of the road? I mean, it's kind of an odd thing. And, and, and they said, we were coming to this place, but clearly it's burned to the ground. And he said, oh, I have a house down the road, bigger, better, nicer, um, that I inherited from my family I don't use. You're welcome to use it. And so they went on their way down the road further, and they had that, and wonderful. It all worked out well. But the, but the fact is, the thing is, that had she been running around with all the rest of them trying to fix things, she wouldn't have been there. You know, sometimes we are just meant to step back and breathe and understand what out there is trying to tell us about us. You know, when we... When we start thinking we know better than God, you know, when we start thinking we have the answer, we have to fix things, we need to do something, yeah, we may need to do something, but it's only after prayer and after contemplation and after meditation and after deliberation and after we have been in that gap, you know, between, between re react and respond, there is a beautiful gap, G-A-P, one of the ministers used to call it God's area of preparation, I love it. God's area of preparation gives us that time 
through which spirit can change conditions. Because when we don't, we fall into that illusion of separation, right? We fall, again, we fall into that thing, I know better than you do, so I'm going to impose my will on you. I know better, so I'm going to do this instead of that. We have to pull ourselves back. We have to go back to principle, core, concept one. God is all there is. God is all there is. There is no us and them. Them doesn't exist. There is, no <laughs> there is no you people. You people. <laughs> it just makes me laugh because there's a religious science minister who says that a lot. <laughs> Stands up there and goes, you people. You know. Anyway, <laughs> shh, don't tell her I said that. <sighs> there is no you people. You know, there is no us and them. There is no outside of us. There's only one energy. We're it. We're all we got. This is it. You know, and we are one. We are one. Go back to principle. Go back to God is all there is. In that, <laughs> I love this. The Science of Mind magazine, I don't know if you know it, but it's the only magazine that's been in continuous operation uh, since 1927. It is the longest digest magazine in continuous operation in the United States. And you thought it was the Reader's Digest, didn't you? <laughs> but it isn't. Reader's Digest stopped printing for a few years. <clears throat> anyway, in the Science of Mind magazine in September of 1934, Ernest Holmes said this, thoughts are things. Peace, poise, and power are mental attributes. How could they be anything else? Think peace, imbibe poise, claim power. Realize that all there is is for you, and nothing is against you. Feel this, see it, talk, and know it. This is truth. So this is truth. Here we are. This is truth. All there is is God. All there is is spirit. We just put on these suits for a little bit of fun. <laughs> you know, we've put on these bodies. We've clothed ourselves with this skin for, for a, a really, really short period of time as things go, you know, like you think sequoias. We just stepped into these bodies for a limited amount of time to experience fun, to be one in, in the physical form with what we know is true in spirit. God is all there is in us, around us, as us, all things work together for our greater good. Even the stuff we think is horrific, we know it's working us for our greater good. All things, all things work together for our greater good. Right? Emma Curtis Hopkins used to say, our good is our God. I love that. Our good is our God, and our God is our good. And all things work together for our good. So we begin this month. We begin this month, this journeying to oneness. We're not journeying. We begin this one of awakening, awakening to our oneness. So let us take this journey this month together and discover that truth and live through that truth and live from that truth that we know so well in this group. We know this stuff. We've been practicing the science of mind and spirit for many years. Okay, who's been here the longest? <laughs> who's been in the religious science the longest? Who's been, you know, 20 years, 30 years. Anybody 30 years doing, doing science of mind? Okay. Anybody more than 30 years doing science of mind? I mean, look around us. We are, yeah, I know you are. You were born in it. Um, <laughs> we are good at this. We know this. This is our philosophy of life. So let us do this. I mean, here it's easy to do in our, in our community. We are like-minded individuals. It's really easy. So let us this month journey and live it everywhere, in the, in the dry cleaners, in the supermarket, at work, on the freeway. <sighs> Breathe through that one. On the freeway. Take, let's take this journey within and discover the truth at the center of our own being is the same truth that is the center of the being of all life everywhere and live that truth of our oneness with the divine and the oneness with each other. 
Let's make that our practice this month for oneness. Are you with me? Thank you so much.